Um, thank you, Caroline. So um, I always think of this uh, topic. This is basically my third child. So I have two children, and this is my third one. And it was a bit uglier and much harder to deliver than the other two. Um, in 2005, Centre Vancouver Island was identified by the PRA and the Health Authority uh, as an underserviced area for local renal care resources. So I don't have a map, but as you, I think there's a map over there. Oh no, that's in here. Um, there's a map. If you think of Vancouver Island, everything was at the bottom. So the whole island was funneling down to the very tip. So for a catchment of pr approximately 300,000 people everywhere from Nanaimo North, the only lo local services were office consultation, and even that only started in sort of 2005, and a satellite dialysis units that were coordinated via Victoria. There was no kidney care. There was no renal biopsy. There was no in-hospital dialysis. There was no PD. There was no home hemo, and there was no transplant follow-up. So between 2005 and 2008, a lot of planning and a lot of meetings occurred. Um, by 2008, we had opened our local kidney care clinic, which was um, a significant first step. In 2009, we started doing renal biopsies. In 2010, our, home, or our hospital hemodialysis uh, unit opened, and that was in September. And it looks like it was two years later, but it was actually about 17 months later, our home dialysis peritoneal uh, program opened. And then in 2014, we started to have home hemo patients followed locally in Nanaimo, although they still do train in Victoria. Um, but our home hemo team drives up and comes to do clinic in Nanaimo. So the, for the patient perspective, other than the training, the care is delivered out of the center island. And just this past spring, in May 2015, our transplant follow-up clinic opened. And then in 2016, in case we didn't have enough on our plates, we're converting to a fully electronic chart, which I believe is the first in the province. So um, the iHealth initiative on Vancouver Island is going to be electronizing everything we do from orders to documentations to most to advanced care planning to dialysis unit charting at the bedside to dietitian notes to social worker notes, the whole shebang. So our successes, um, I think our biggest success is that Centre and Northern Vancouver Island patients have better access to local renal services. So instead of driving all the way down to the tip, they now drive to the lower third, which is still actually really quite far. So to come down from Port Hardy to Nanaimo is still a big seven or eight hour trip with significant treacherous roads in the winter especially. Um, however, we've really shortened that travel time and, and allowed our patients to have a lot closer to home access. A um, couple of the other things that we do, we have nephrologists who travel out to the satellite dialysis units to do their clinics there. We have telehealth access for patients who are on the, the re more remote island areas in the northern part of the, pro of the island, and also uh, outreach where our kidney care team travels up to Campbell River and soon to be Cumberland Comox um, to see patients locally there. So we've really embraced that uh, outreach in terms of local delivery. The other big success uh, is that our program has actually met the PRA goals of caring for and keeping patients closer to home, and our PD growth rate is the highest in the province. Um, and we have three of our home dialysis champions here in the, stand up you guys, because this is actually a big deal. Um, so we actually hit these numbers. <laughs> so um, our, home, our home and PD percentage is 33%. Um, so this is how our dialysis modality delivery is distributed as of this summer. And just to give you a, a sense of how that evolved, um, this is one of our challenges, is because we've had explosive home-based therapy growth on the, on our, in our program, the acuity, there was a brief sucking sound as we put everybody who was good enough to be at home at home. And so our program was also designed with a, quite a dramatically smaller proportion of in-center patients than anywhere else in BC. So this is about a year after the PD program opened. You can see the difference. So the red is the in-center dialysis swath, the group of people who are on in-center dialysis. It was not just a little bit, but a lot smaller. You can actually see the blue is the satellite dialysis population. So those are people who live hours away from our hospital unit. It's like the Pac-Man that ate our entire program. Um, and the green, which is where we want to go, we want to be green, we want those people to be at home, and we actually, within a year of opening, we're very close to the provincial target. Just to give you a sense of what's evolved over that time, 
In 2015, the BC percentages actually haven't changed all that much. Um, our ratios are still shifting, so we are expanding our in-center resources. Our PD program keeps growing. Our home dialysis program, hemodialysis program keeps growing. So we are still fairly different from the rest of the province in terms of the ratio of, of where we care for people. There are a few challenges with that kind of expansion. One is the pace of change. Um, a great deal has happened in the last five years in center Vancouver Island. Um, we have, as I said, all our best patients are at home. Um, so we have a very high acuity of the remaining patients on conventional dialysis and probably a disproportionate number with high acuity in the satellite units. We don't really have enough in center. We have enough chairs. We just don't have enough nurses to help people be in those chairs. Um, so it, it's made it, there have been some challenges in distribu d delivering the distributed service. Um, it's made our in-center staff um, struggle at times, so there are morale issues when you only take care of the very sickest patients. There's never an easy patient for those in-center nurses. Um, so I think that the lessons that we learned, um, one is that in-center resources are key, so we actually I regret a little bit making us look so different in terms of our swath of in-center patients. Um, but I think the other really important thing is that the home and independent dialysis targets can be reached and that one of the advantages we had as a new program is that we set the culture, the BC targets were already established and we were able to set the culture from day one. This is our target. It's not different from anything else because we haven't done anything else. This is the way it's going to be and that's the way it is. So I think it, it's a really powerful demonstration of how culture in a program can, can actually make a big difference and we were lucky in that sense. And that's it. So I'd like to start with a question. Um, given those vast numbers that you have achieved on PD so wonderfully, um, how do you anticipate those patients transitioning if they fail PD for one of the varied reasons? So yeah, I think that's something that we do need to look forward to. So once you achieve those nice large green numbers and you get everybody onto home therapy, you actually have to plan for when they eventually might come off home therapy. So we're in a bit of a honeymoon period in some ways. Um, so we know that PD patients can't stay on PD forever, so we have to start planning now to figure out what they're going to do next. I think next stage is going to be a potential, once they're used to being at home, if they can use a simpler home hemo machine, that's one thing we're, we're thinking about. Um, really trying to use some of the home hemodialysis tools that have been piloted sort of across the country through um, Rob Polly and Chris Chan and Mike Copeland, kind of using the leverage that you have in associating PD and home hemo and sort of saying, well, you're already at home. This is different, but it's not that much different. You've taken one step, you can take the next. I think that's something we're looking at. Um, and I think, again, planning for, we do have to recognize that at some point those people are going to get worse and, and upping our transplant rates as well. So those are sort of all strategies, but it's still, we're still aware that that's going to be a future challenge for us. With all the wonderful gro growth up island for Central Island patients, mm -hmm. it seems that the Central Island patients and Northern Island patients are still at a disadvantage for diagnostic and interventional radiology. Is there any talk within the health authority of supporting your program by providing those services closer to home for the patients? Oh, you planted person. <laughs> she, I did not plant her. Um, <laughs> that might be one of our access nurses. Um, the, short, the shorter answer is actually I, I don't know the answer, but it's, it is also a geographic challenge. So um, it, the question highlights the fact that it is challenging to deliver services when the quaternary resources are at the tip of the island. So it's an, it is an ongoing Issue. We've had a great vascular surgeon who comes up and does clinics in Nanaimo, which has Dr. Robinson, which has been a huge benefit to our program and has really made a significant dent in our no-show rates and our access to getting those patients into the appointments. Marie. I think, sorry, Susan, we'll just take one, one more question in the interest of time as we are running into our break. 
I was just wondering, with your PD catheter insertions, are they now being done in Nanaimo as well? Or are you sending them to Vancouver or Victoria still? So the catheter insertion options have been also really key to our program success. And actually, I neglected to mention my colleague, Dr. Allison Kroom, who really spearheaded the PD program. Um, that was her her delivery, her child delivery. Um, so she did an enormous job kind of getting that off the ground. Um, so we actually have local surgical insertion and uh, bedside insertion by Dr. Galen Hargrove in Victoria. So we, because we have access in both places to both types, the local service from the surgeon has made a big difference. Um, and we're working on getting more surgeons trained. So yeah, that's, that's key.